Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Kim Gill, ISCA member and co-chair of the Art Innovation Talk Committee, along with Mary Lou Dykstra. And we are thrilled to be offering our ninth AIT presentation with our very own ISCA member, Doris Chere. We certainly hope you've been enjoying our AIT presentations as they are designed to educate, inspire, and ignite your imagination. So today, um, our today's talk will be hosted by our very own AIT committee member, Haley Joseph. And April Rimpo is our Zoom manager, and I'll be serving as your moderator, moderator today, collecting all of your questions. So great. We are very excited to have her here. And uh, Haley, are you ready to introduce Doris? <laughs> Hi. Welcome, friends. And thank you, Kim. Um, we're so glad to be here. So Doris fell in love with painting when she lived in Texas. Doris's love of painting started when a Houston neighbor took her to her first watercolor class. Painting became a daily activity and a passion. Doris has attended a variety of courses in the United States and Canada. Mixed media is her favorite form of painting. She loves exploring with textures, shapes, and a more contemporary look Doris has a bachelor's in fine arts and a master's in visual art education. Growing up on a farm in Alberta and later living in many different locations in the Providence, she has captured impressions of landscapes and important moments of her life. Her paintings invite you to embark on this journey of her memory with her. She says, I like to paint the emotion and sensations experienced rather than what I see. Doris has traveled all over Alberta as an artist in the community. As a guest artist in Quebec, taught across Alberta and has participated in artist residencies in Banff, Peru, and India. She won the Sylvie Brabange Award for her work in the community. Doris lets her work travel across Canada and the United States. Doris's courses on mixed media are now available online at sites called umity.com and skillshare.com. Join her in the joys of creating mixed media. ISEA is delighted to introduce Doris Shure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate your very nice introduction. Um, today, I'm going to start with sharing my screen. And we shall be having a presentation. Now, I'm going to talk today about creating a series and easy steps that you can do to create a series. I started in painting, but in the last couple of years, I've started to do uh, sculpture as well as painting. It all started with these large banners of cloth that I created, and I created like a little mini forest, and people could walk through there. And I was starting to add to the collection of these banners, and then COVID happened. And I started taking walks and noticing nature's details. And I started making sculpture using Mother Nature as my material. And it's uh, what I always like to remember as is that creating is an act of hope. So whenever you're creating something, you're actually looking forward and being very happy. So this is what I use. Uh, little bits of plants and flowers, and I just keep, um, I use that as my source material. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through on how to create a series, and easy and going slow are the key words in creating a series. It takes time. Remember that you cannot use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. And that's one of my favorite mottos from Maya Angelou. Creating a series takes time, lots of it. Series can be different lengths. 
They can be eight to 10 paintings, or they can be uh, maybe as many as 100 paintings. Or if you're not doing paintings, could be sculptures, could be prints, could be anything. In fact, a lot of series have different mediums, and that's what I'm doing. I'm inspired by nature, so I also create paintings. But my favorite ideas right now are the ones are my sculptures, and I'm really excited about it. Um, if you want to know how to start a series, you can start by brainstorming an idea that you have. For example, my series that I'm working on right now started with cleaning up my backyard and finding this broken robin's egg uh, while I was cleaning, and some debris had fallen into it. And you never know where ideas come from. They just flutter in like magic almost. So this is where my series started. But if you want to start your own series, just think about the things you love. And, and then you'll see that ideas start to come. And follow your gut. I think that would be my favorite uh, suggestion. Um, and it makes everything personal. Um, you can combine ideas. You can take, uh, like I took the little bits of egg, broken egg, and then I started adding uh, debris that I found on my walks. And I started adding sticks and I started adding different things and playing with it. So do tests. Um, believe in it, your intuition. Grab a pen, your sketchbook. Draw your ideas out. Find as many as you can. Even find a friend. So at the time I was, I found that broken egg. I was also studying the idea of kintsugi, and this is a Japanese philosophy that's all about uh, repairing and repurposing broken objects. It's really popular in pottery, but it's done with all kinds of objects, and these. Broken pieces are almost a symbol of life's experiences. Whatever um, has happened to you will make you stronger. And a break or a moment of failure can be an opportunity. And this is what these uh, kintsugi um, actually suggest. So... But what I fell in love with is the repurposing and making things precious. That was my favorite topic. And this is my first piece. I took the eggs, uh, some eggs, the concept of the egg, and I added different elements that I found on my walks. It could be leaves, it could be rocks, it could be seeds, it could be little tiny branches. I even have one with a, a skull that I found, a bird skull that I found. So this is all little tiny elements <clears throat> that I found on my walks. I entered this piece in ISEA's exhibition in 2022. And this is what they look like up close. I decided to add the goal to highlight the preciousness of these little objects. The idea was to make people notice a little more the details around them, because quite often we forget to look. You go on a walk and you just motor through and then you forgot to look. And there's lots of beautiful little details that you can see when you go on a walk. Um, like I said before, I use eggshells, branches, and each piece for me tells a story. Even if the story is in only in my head, uh, it gets me started on the piece. I try to tell a story. And the story might change as you work, but it helps to create the piece. Now, plan, plan, plan. That's what I believe in. And you have a subject, and how? what do you want to say with this subject? Write down your brief idea. You don't have to have it polished. In fact, I included the drawing of what you just saw. That was my plan. I'm not a very fancy sketcher. 
I just like to get the ideas down <clears throat> before I forget them. So this is as fancy as my plan goes. Because most likely it'll change. Like in this plan, I had sticks sticking out of the box with the eggs. Well, that didn't last long once I started doing it. It looked pretty ugly. Uh, so uh, I just tweaked it. And that's what you need to do. You take your ideas and you tweak them. And you make a big plan, a big plan for the whole show. And look how fancy that is. It's just little marks, little suggestions, just something to remind me of the idea. And later on, I'll pick one of these ideas and I'll start jotting them down and adding details and steps. So you don't have to be fancy. And you can create prototypes. So prototypes are dreams in action. So you make your first steps. Your first step is your prototype and then you keep adding. Mine was a painting. So I love painting nests. And I've been painting nests on and off all my painting career. So I started with a nest. And I just have found so many nests as I was walking or hiking. And it really inspires me. And so you want to ask yourself, how many do I want to create? Well. That's really up to you. Um, what's your big plan? Do you want a small show? Do you want to just test out an idea? Um, how many of each do you want to plan? If you're working on canvas, what size do you want to work on? Here I was working on sculpture and I decided I only wanted to create small sculptures. So that's basically what I did. I created very small sculptures and I decided I was going to make 20 of them. The idea was that here, when you apply for a show, in Canada anyways, you need at least 20 examples of what you're going to do. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna work on 20. And that's where I started. I still paint. Um, in fact, some of the paintings are related to my uh, sculptures. So part of that is I want to have something on the walls. If I'm going to have a show, I have sculptures in the center and maybe something for my wall. So I've been experimenting with paintings, but I've also started experimenting uh, putting eggs on canvas and sticks on canvas. I'll show you that later. And why a series? Well, a series is the best way that you can develop an idea. Your first idea might be a crash. You might not want to decide, well, that's not a great idea. But if you keep going on it, by the 10th one, you think, oh, yes, I can take it in a different direction. In this direction, it'll work. This idea will work. Sometimes your first idea works, but quite often I found that the first idea is just a beginning and it, it just doesn't always work. So keep that in mind. I also see each piece as a chapter in a book. It tells a story and it the story is mine, but I also like the viewer to create their own story with each piece. And you'll find that the more you create, the better all your pieces get. So keep a sketchbook, do you write down your ideas, but only develop them one at a time. And I find that it really helps to stay on track. If you put away all the materials you're, you, won't, you won't use. For example, um, I've decided to work with sticks and gold and eggshells. Well, I'm going to put away all my collage material. I have tons of fabrics and canvas and uh, different collage materials that I really like. Well, I'm putting those away because I could easily be distracted. It doesn't take much for me to be distracted. So I put all that away and I just work with the materials for that one series. And play. So take the time to 
uh, just play with the materials and try a small piece, try a large piece, create contrast. Are you, do, will you want a man-made materials? Do you want natural materials? Those are all the questions I asked myself. And uh, once in a while, I'll just change sizes. Or like yesterday, what I did is I just took a piece and I broke it all apart. And then I built a new one out of it. And this new one was way better. Uh, so finding your voice, like finding your idea is really what that means. So you won't find that idea and you won't find your voice until you do the work. So find a link between all the pieces you're, you've created. Quite often at the beginning of series, you don't really know what you're going to what you're trying to say and what you're going to do. But as you work on the pieces, that story that you're trying to create comes and write it down as quickly as you can. It, it's really uh, by working that you get all those ideas and the statement that you need to go with your series. And work often. If you work uh, regularly, I find the ideas come faster. And then you find what you really like. Commitment is really important, but so is playing. Playing with the material is quite important. So if you only have 15 minutes a day, just take those 15 minutes and work with it. Um, there are obstacles. Life gets in the way. Your grandchildren come to visit. You're um, you have to go to a visit some relatives that are ill or different things in life kind of just take your time, but take the time you have while you're away or while your grandkids are visiting, use your sketchbook, put in 15 minutes a day. You'd, you'd be amazed how much you can do in 15 minutes a day over a, a long time period. Don't wait for that block of perfect time where you'll have three, four hours uninterrupted. Just do the work now. It, the time is now to make your work. And work with what you have. If you can't afford supplies, work with inexpensive ones. Work with materials that are around you. Scavenge or trade materials with friends. Just make art. For example, I was stuck one day and I decided I was I wanted to try something different. And because I put away all my materials, I didn't have very much around me. So I used my glue gun glue to create this lace effect that you see with these eggs. So all I did is drip glue gun glue and create this lace effect, let it cool, and then painted it with gesso. And it's amazingly strong. I also work in multiples or triples. So I will create one or two, sometimes three in a, of a kind. And sometimes I keep them all, but sometimes I only keep one. I keep the best one. You always want to work towards what your best is. And working in pairs, I find, helps you get the kinks out of your ideas. You put one together, and then it's not quite right, so you put a second one together. And then the idea, you think, okay, if I put this part and that part together, uh, I'll have a better piece. And sure enough, that works. So... Uh, visually, um, also in a show, if you have more than one piece, uh, pieces look better in multiples. And then what colors should I use? Now, if you're a painter, it, use a limited palette. As a sculptor in these sculptures, I also decided to use a limited palette. I decided on white and natural colors and gold. So I have all three. And I'm trying very hard to stick to just that color. Um, it, I'm saying it's very hard. It's not easy to stick to um, 
the same materials all the time. So these accents of gold are the important parts for me. And paint on or sculpt on a routine. So plan your days, plan your week. And work is related to your energy. If you don't feel like working on one particular piece, you can work on another. I often work on two or three pieces at a time. So if I'm stuck on one, then at least I have a, another piece to work on. This is the same for painting. I've always worked on two or three pieces at a time and it helps me unstuck. So while I work on the one where I'm not stuck, an idea quite often comes to fix the one where I am stuck. And also I have to admit, I get bored quite easily. So I need to have those two or three pieces at a time to just help the ideas flow. So mark it on your calendar. That's what I do is I make deadlines that just get me motivated. Sometimes I can meet those deadlines, sometimes I can't, but at least it makes me move forward with the pieces. And keep in mind, no one works alone. Find some art friends that, that you can bounce ideas with. I have a critique group that I uh, meet with uh, once a month, and this is where I get some of my best ideas. So they, you bring your piece, and then you help each other. Okay, they'll, I'll say, for example, I'm stuck. I don't quite know what to do uh, with the piece on the right, for example. Before, the piece on the right was just a piece that I put on, that I hung on a white wall. Well, it just blended into the wall and didn't look good at all. So uh, the suggestion from one of my art friends was put a background on it. Uh, so I took out this canvas and I painted it a dark color. And here it is. It just showcased my piece the way I wanted it to be uh, showcased. So it did a great job. Uh, dump the naysayers. So the people that don't encourage you, don't bother with them. Just stick to the people that are really encouraging and the people that will help you create your series. Be tenacious. How long will it take? It takes a long time. Some people take just a few months to create a series. Other people spend years working on a series. So be a bulldog. Stick to it. Um, remember that some things take, good things take a long time to uh, create. And explore something like the multidisciplinary approach. If you paint in watercolor, add a bit of collage or acrylic. If you paint in acrylic, add textures. If, like me, I am doing a little bit of sculpture, but I add a canvas background. And so that adds another dimension to the work. Play, find out, try different things uh, that will make your piece wonderful. There's an instructor I had a long time ago that said, "You sometimes you have to take the risk. Your piece is okay, so you could leave it that way. But if you add something to it, it could be wonderful. But the chance is, you could also wreck it. So there comes a point in your pieces where you have to take the chance to make something wonderful. So remember, the creative person is willing to live with ambiguity. Doesn't have to have the you have to realize that the problems that you have can't be solved immediately, and you can afford to wait for the right idea. This is also really important to keep in mind. And vary your process just a little wee bit. You've seen all my stick sculptures. Well, this case belonged to my grandmother and I'm going to put a sculpture in it in the near future. I've started, but I'm not close enough to show you yet. But it's keeping within the idea, but I'm straying a little bit, but not too far. 
These are pieces that I created with an art group that they belong to. And we created a series of boxes where we tell a story. So I used my eggs and my sticks to create a story. The one on the right with the dark sides, for example, tells the story of when I was a child. And because I was on a farm, we were allowed, uh, we were allowed to walk all over the place and do whatever. So I remember crawling into this um, fox den and finding all kinds of little bits of debris in there. And this kind of tells my story. The others all tell stories from my childhood too. And then all, I created a whole bunch of small pieces, like the ones at the top, and I put them all together to create a, I think it was about 15 feet wide um, piece to put on a wall. So don't limit yourself to uh, just creating singles maybe create a whole bunch of singles and put them together. My next plan is to work with the shadows, like the one at the bottom, and try and incorporate shadows from my sticks into a painting, or maybe somehow related to my sculptures. So I have ideas for the future. Sometimes I don't act on them right away, but I keep them in the back of my head and boom, all of a sudden I'll get the right idea and I'm on it and it gets done really quickly. So last advice, tweak your artwork near the end. Make sure it looks really good and be proud of your polished pieces. And little details like this, have you signed your work? I often forget that. But remember, this is the part I'd like you to remember. You need to love the process more than the end product. You have to really enjoy creating. And that's what I find is really important. So now we'll switch cameras and I'll show you some of my sculptures and answer some questions at the same time. Do you want to stop sharing right now? Okay, I can do that. Okay. Now I will and move to the other camera. I'm going to move to a little bit. So this is a piece that I've created where I use sticks and I've added a little bits of gold at the end of the six sticks to kind of add attention to the piece. This is a nest that I found on one of my walks and some little quail eggs. In this quail egg, I added some leaves that I found from a flower. Originally, the flower had color in it, but as it dried, it had no more color. Now, these pieces are meant to sit, so they'll sit on the table, and that's how this one works. I'll just show you... Another one. Now this piece is, uh, this is just a, a box that somebody gave me that to make a bird's, uh, like a bird feeder. People give me things just because I'm an artist. And what happens is I sometimes use them, sometimes I don't, but I use them to, I put sticks in it and then I added eggs to it. This is a, another piece where I just took one single egg and I added it and it was it's hiding. Because quite often in nature, when you're looking for something, the most beautiful little things are hiding. So that's what I was trying to create there. And this piece is a cup. At one time, this was a bird feeder in my garden that I had created just for fun. And I decided I would like to use it to create a piece for my eggs. Oh, 
this one is still a piece in uh, that I haven't quite completed. What I'm doing is I'm taking some sticks that I glued together and then I added some sticks that, this is an old placemat that I decided to paint and I created a cone and put it in. Are there any questions while I'm talking? First of all, Doris, I have to say, you are the perfect example of what it means to be an experimental artist. And uh, this is part of the glue gun experiment. So I just wanted one single piece and I have my egg. And then I had this stick and it kind of looked like it didn't match. So I added some white at the top and now I think it matches. So that's kind of the general idea. I just have one more piece. You can hear me. This is uh, one of the pieces I'm starting to work on on canvas. So I've added sticks and my eggs that I love. And what I did is I, this was a painting before. <laughs> I also recycle some of my paintings, I have to say. So I put sticks on my painting and I spray painted the sticks and it left a shadow and I decided I love that shadow. So uh, I, I was just going to move over the sticks, but then I had an accident and they all fell over the floor on the floor and they broke. So I just readjusted the composition. <laughs> and, but I love the, this is the latest. So I love the idea of the sticks and the shadows and I want to work on that concept more. I love, that's where my shadows that you saw earlier, um, why I, I decided to work on shadows. So. You can kind of see the eggs more clearly here. Okay, I'm open for questions now. Hey, Doris, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Doris? Yes. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay, because um, we do have some questions and I thought earlier maybe you couldn't, but uh, you know, you truly are such an experimental artist. I mean, what a, what a how inspiring. So we do have a few questions. Um, we have a question. Uh, were you an artist in residence in Peru? It was one of our I, first questions. Yes, I was. Um, this was before COVID. Um, we, uh, I joined, well, it was a residency that was organized by an organization called Archetopia. And they have residencies in Mexico, Peru, and Italy. So I applied to go to the Peru residency and it was fantastic. We learned all kinds of information about natural dyes and traveled quite a bit around the area where we were. We were just in a very tiny village outside of Cusco. And the village, they're no longer in that village, the organization. They've moved to a little larger town. But it was really fun to live near ordinary people, so to speak, and kind of know what Peru was really like. I enjoyed that part. What an experience. And same person asked, do you have any issues collecting materials, permissions or restrictions you have to observe? Um, I mainly collect material that's on the ground and discarded um, in the bush. So there's no real problems there. Yeah. It's materials that are discarded already. That you turn into a beautiful piece of artwork. Okay, and a question about the material you use for your banners at the very beginning. I remember we talked about that, but yeah, share with the folks what what you used. Oh, those banners are just curtains from Ikea. Um, and now they've discontinued selling those. So I'm sorry to say they no longer exist. Um, I wish they did. I really love creating those banners. I would have loved to 
uh, do more of them. I'm on the search for some new materials. I love those curtains because they were just the right thickness and they were semi-transparent. I just love that. All right, another question. Um, do you fill your eggs with resin? Yes, I do. I have also tried to use acrylic flow medium, pouring medium, sorry, not flow medium, acrylic pouring medium, and that works as well. Clear, yeah. I can't believe that one, one um, leaf you had in there that just preserved it. It works really well. Um, with the acry acrylic pouring medium, it does that too. The reason I decided to stay with resin is because it dries more quickly. Uh, because the eggshell isn't porous or not very porous, the acrylic pouring medium takes like a couple weeks to completely dry. Hmm. Yeah. And, you, and you've got a lot you're creating. Um, mm -hmm. Someone mentioned a great comment about putting away other materials to avoid distractions. I did the same, putting away the sculpture materials when I dove into a new portrait focus painting series. And she said, thank you. And that really is a very good suggestion. Oh, I learned that the hard way because I, and I don't know if all artists like that, but I'm very easily distracted. So it, it really helps to put things away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. Um, what medium do you use to make things white? I use gesso. Yeah. Um, yeah, gesso works really well. For the sticks, I used to paint them by hand individually. It took three coats, but now I've started dipping. I found a gesso that's a little more liquid than the one I normally use. And I just dip right now and then put it on a plastic surface. Okay. I can just see it with a, you know, curtain rod or something and hanging them with, to dry. Oh, <laughs> oh that's a good idea. Oh, I like that one. With your clothespins, you know, out in the wind. Yeah. Um, oh, I, oh, someone says they, I struggle getting a large concept and go a couple of steps in my head, and then it seems too big, and I draw a blank. Endangered species, she has ideas like endangered species, environmental changes affecting our landscapes, too big, and it gets too confusing. Um, I guess, how do you how do you bring it in? It's probably you, what she's asking. Yeah, like it, endangered species, for example, if you wanted to take that challenge, well, which endangered species and why? You have to really come down to the why you want to do this. And uh, once you have the why, then the rest kind of falls in place. That's what I find. So uh -huh. why do you need to do endangered species? What's important for you there? There's a lot of thinking involved. And it's, um, it's you'll surprise yourself. That's the good part. You'll have great ideas, and then you'll really find out what catches your eye about, for example, the endangered species concept. I liked how you said you 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 kind of do a prototype, or you do a little bit in a sketch, but but you don't make it so complicated. I I like that. Um, I, you, I I just thought, I just find if you make it too detailed and too perfect. You're committed. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. almost like you can't change it because it. Oh, it looks so good on paper. I have to do it that way, right? Yeah. But if yeah. it's just a real, a real sketch, then then you you're allowed to change things around, or that's the way it is in my head, anyways. Do you also um, journal, like write, you know, writing? Do you do like, you know, there's the three pages of Julia Cameron and that kind of thing. Do you, do you ever, you know, sit down and write every day or anything like that to explore your series ideas, to put down all your ideas about the why? I'm not good at journaling every day, but when I'm starting a series and I'm or I'm stuck, then I do journal and I find it does help. Um, 
just writing down things seems to get your head a little bit more clear about what you really want. Um, I just find that some days I have nothing to write, or it feels that way. Anyways. <laughs> but when I, I need the help, then I do the journaling. Sure. Do you also get, I'm sorry, I need, I need to get to a few more questions, but on this same, I was just talking um, yesterday to, to some people and they were saying they get their ideas while they're walking. And it sounds like you're out in nature and you're walking a lot. Do you get a lot of your ideas there? Yes, because then you're relaxed and you're looking around. And here where I live, nature's not far away. It's only like a 10 minute walk away. So I can go walk in nature as much as I want. Uh, nature is really, I've tried lots of different subjects and I, I rotate subjects. I should say that too. I've, there's subjects I treat, I started on like the nests when I was just a beginning painter and now I'm coming back to nests. And there's a few topics like that that I seem to return to all the time. Uh, <clears throat> once in a while, I'll I'll do um, portraits because I I kind of like portraits, but I like children's portraits. But in the end, I always come back to nature. So. Yeah, and the nests. What did, what do the nests mean to you? The nests. <clears throat> excuse me. The nests to me are all are a symbol of family, and the gathering together and the protection. Like you protect your your children, kind of thing. So it's 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 more of a symbol to me than it is a, a, something I want to um, it, it to draw. Like I I'll draw nests nests, but I really like the symbol of nests more than anything. And they're beautiful. And speaking with okay, so someone asked, what do you use to glue your the sticks together? Um, gesso. <clears throat> I, I'll, for, the, for the big pieces, I'll I'll use wire and I'll tie them together. But mostly uh gesso is the best glue once it's dry. It makes everything hard. Wherever you paint it, it's hard. Just like it. I don't know if you've tried to get it off your clothes. It's just about impossible. Yeah. Well, it's the same for the sticks or any other art material. It makes things stick very well. Right. I also use gel. Uh, if And yeah, mostly gel. If I don't want to add gesso to the materials and I want to leave the natural color, I'll use uh, heavy gel. Heavy gel. Okay, great. Um, how do you make your eggs? Uh, I have quite a few friends that are collecting eggs for me. Okay. <laughs> so, you don't make them. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm sort of I have too many right now, but for uh, they've been very diligent about collecting collecting eggs for me, um, and I've gotten to the point where I'm really picky about how they've even broken so i i really pick the ones that are broken in interesting ways are there any chicken eggs or are they all bird bird eggs out in nature oh there's chicken eggs because it's too hard to find that many bird eggs and i don't want to break them on purpose so uh uh i have some friends one friend that's collecting organic chicken eggs for me and others are collecting regular chicken eggs and then do you do you dip them in the in the gold is that gold paint gold leaf gold it's gold paint um i paint the edges i've tried gold leaf and i have a few with gold leaf i like it less it's almost too shiny it takes away from i really want people to look inside the egg and I find if the edge is too shiny, it takes away from people. Look, they see the gold, but they don't look at what's really inside. And I want people to look at what's inside the egg more than the edge of the egg. But it does draw them in. Okay. But um, it draws. Yeah. Yes, it does. 
Uh, someone, another comment. I love the addition of the of your shadows. Definitely adds depth to the three D pieces. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. And someone signed in late. Can I see this video later? Yes, yes. You go to our ISEA website. Go to the home page, and in the upper bar, it'll say AIT, and it'll take it'll take us about a week to get your presentation up. It takes a little while. We edit and do some things, and. And uh, we'll let people know um, when it's available to watch on our website. Uh, another one. Do you have to sanitize the nests before using? Mm, I've never done that. Okay. Uh, have, you, have you gotten sick? <laughs> no. Uh, quite often these abandoned nests have been up in a tree for even a year or more. So the odds of have anything being contaminating you are pretty minimal. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. You could spray a little vinegar on if you wanted, huh? Or something. Yeah. Uh, another question. Do you have, um, do you have a special storage system for all your 3d works? Where do you put everything? Uh, at the moment, it's a shelf on, in my basement. Um, but I also have some plastic uh, storage containers that I use and some bubble wrap. Yeah. I've okay. shipped a few, but mostly wrapped in bubble wrap. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another question uh, just pertaining to our art innovation talks. Um, yes, they are. You can access them right through our website, and uh, we have uh, as you know with Doris's there'll be nine, and you can watch them as many times as you want. Just hit AIT at the top uh, tab on our homepage, click on the presentation you want to watch, and you can watch it as many times as you want. So, um, which is really nice. Um, and let's see, we have another one. Do you actively? Oh, do you actively seek buyers for your eggs and sticks sculptures? Or are I, they I haven't yet. I've participated in quite a few group shows, and people seem to find me through those. Yeah. Well, I've I I just think you've been truly inspiring. Um, I wanted to do a series for a long time and, and um, you've really inspired me to do so and spread my wings on different mediums. So thank you. I appreciate oh. that. Well, <laughs> Does anyone yeah. else have any questions? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you are very interesting and enjoyable. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I just, someone just commented. So oh, well, thank sure you. everybody's enjoyed it. And um, thank you for it's all the fun. great I think great advice. I love that. Prototypes, um, are, prototypes are dreams and actions. I love that. Haley, do you have any? Oh, beautiful presentation. Thank you. Terrific to see you again. Um, I took your great class in Canada. Wonderful. Thank you. You're getting a lot of. So, but thank you. Haley, you can take over now. Great. Um, Thank you, Doris. Um, I, I loved your presentation. I really appreciated how you said that creating is an act of hope. I can't imagine a better um, thing to do in, a time, in times like these. So thank you. Um, and many thanks to all who joined us today. We look forward to seeing you again at our next presentation on May 16th. 2024 at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're trying a new time and that will be with um, Ms. Lee and Frame. So we'll see you then. Thank you.